Hi, my name is Coy Blair, and I'm the lead curator at the Appalachian Bear Rescue in Townsend, Tennessee. Today I'll be discussing my graduate research project at the University of Tennessee, which is assessing survival and spatial ecology of American black bears released from Appalachian Bear Rescue. I would like to go over some preliminary data that we have uh, discovered thus far in the project. So just for a little background, man managers, uh, wildlife managers have about six options when it comes to dealing with injured and orphan American black bears. And you can see those listed on the screen. Today, I will be focusing on the option of rehabilitation and how it can be an effective tool for wildlife managers. So since 1996, ABR has released over 260 bears back into the wild. Of that number of bears, we have very little return data that actually comes back to us. Um, the data that we received back is gonna be anecdotal reports from um, uh, car collisions and uh, harvest information, things of that nature. And that's really where we're getting a lot of our return data. Um, so as far as ABR goes, we're very limited in what we really know about the, uh, how effective our program of rehabilitation and release is. Also, just in the literature, you can do a quick literature search and you'll, you'll see that the uh, bear rehabilitation is very limited. You won't find a lot of information on that. So in 2015, we were presented with a very unique opportunity to have a large sample size to uh, radio collar uh, black bears at our, our rehabilitation facility. And we took in a record number of bears um, in 2015 at 36 bears and took in another 20 in 2016. So we decided if we were gonna do research that that would be the time to do it, to have a large enough sample size. And we just hope to uh, uh, you know, learn more about ABR's program, but really we wanted to help close that knowledge gap that exists out there in the literature when it comes to bear rehabilitation. So the overall objectives for my study um, are centered around post-release survival, conflict behavior, and spatial ecology. And specifically with spatial ecology, I'm looking at uh, how bears uh, move around the landscape, so movement metrics, uh, their space use, and their denning preferences. So in order to do this, as I mentioned, we collared 42 bears between uh, November the 9th of 2015 throughout April of 2016, and that included 23 males and 19 females. And all the bears were either released as cubs of the year, so less than 12 months of age, or as yearlings, so 12 plus months of age. All bears received a, uh, or were fitted with a Vectronic GPS uh, wildlife tracking collar. These wildlife collars were programmed to drop off on their own at about a 60 week time frame. And they were also programmed to take a location or what's referred to as a fix every three hours. They, were, they also had a special mortality delay sensor. So if the collars remained motionless for an extended period of time that's uh, preset, they would actually alert me via text or email. So for my study area, um, this include, it included the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and the, the Cherokee National Forest the North and South regions um, that, are, that are on the upper and lower areas of the, Great, of the Smokies there. So the combined total study area was right around 1.2 million acres of forested land. What we found out was that survival overall was high one year post release at 88.5%. We also discovered that uh, gender did not, was not related, or survival was not related um, by gender. So males versus females, there was no effect with sex when it came to the uh, post release survival rates. However, we did find that uh, survival was related to release age. Specifically, we discovered um, that older bears tended to fare better um, one year post release when it came to survival. Um, as an example to, to display that, the youngest bear in this study was 292 days old and had a, a representative uh, survival estimate of 60.5%, whereas the oldest age bear in our study at 548 days would have a survival estimate of 99.7%. We also wanted to look at cost specific mortality. So of the bears that uh, were in D mortalities, you know, what specifically happened to those bears. And so we had four total mortalities, one year post-release um, or non, a 9.5% mortality rate. 
We had one conflict removal, two road kills, and one unknown cause. Um, just as an, a quick example, the bear pictured here was a yearling female. She was discovered on an area or a highway um, running between Wallen and Townsend, Tennessee, where she was hit by a car. She was uh, taken to the University of Tennessee's College of Veterinary Medicine, brought to Appalachian Bear Rescue. We kept her um, in, in captivity until she was ready for release. Upon release to a, a, the, roughly the same area, about a year um, later, almost to the week, she was rediscovered, again hit by a car, this time it was fatal. We also wanted to look at conflict behavior. And so out of the 42 bears that were released um, one year uh, post-study or post-release, we had three that engaged in conflict type behavior. You can see what they did there listed. Um, however, we had seven total bears out of the 42 that were released that came from mothers with maternal conflict history. And so three of those uh, of the seven actually ended up engaging in conflict behavior, whereas four did not engage. And interest, interestingly enough, two of the four bears that did not engage in conflict behavior post-release were siblings to to uh, two of the three that did engage. We also want to look at dispersal from release site, which is important for managers considering uh, release sites for uh, um, bears. And so you can see there that the mean is just shy of about 10 kilometers, um, with females having just a little bit greater distances when it came to dispersal from release sites. And uh, you can also see the range listed there. Um, and out of six bears that dispersed greater than 20 kilometers from the release sites, it was interesting that five of those bears were actually females. We also want to look at denning ecology, and at no surprise, we discovered that most of our bears that were uh, released uh, chose tree dens as their uh, winter denning sites, and that was right out of about 55.5%, followed by ground nest and then excavated dens. So in summary, managers have options when it comes to dealing with injured and orphaned um, American black bears and uh, bear rehabilitation can offer help to bears managers and it's also greatly supported by the public. It is our hope that this uh, information and this, the knowledge gained from this research project will help tighten that knowledge gap that exists in the literature when it comes to bear rehabilitation. And at the same time, um, it has been useful to help ABR gauge its ability um, to uh, rehabilitate and release wild American black bears. I'd just like to acknowledge the partnerships involved in my graduate project, um, Appalachian Bear Rescue, the uh, University of Tennessee's Department of Forestry, Wildlife and Fisheries, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, Great Smoky Mountains National Park Service, and the U.S. Geological Survey. Thank you.